Well, hello there, old man Kelly here, Jeff to my friends, and you can call me Jeff. So on this episode, I'm going to talk about a film that was made the year I was born. I'm going to talk about the 1961 classic movie, The Beast of Yucca Flats. Hey, I know it's not on par with some of the films I've done in the past, but I've got to change it up once in a while. Now, The Beast of Yucca Flats is a marvel of filmmaking. The filmmaker's name, the man who made the film, was Coleman Francis, and one can only wonder if Francis was an untalented hack or an unappreciated genius. Look, I know what you're saying. Jeff, The Beast of Yucca Flats was a horrible film. Well, maybe, or maybe you just didn't understand it because people often hate things they don't understand. Now, Coleman Francis, as far as I know, was born in Oklahoma in 1919. Somewhere in the 1940s, he moved to Hollywood with the idea of being an actor. And for the next 30 years, he only got small bit parts in various movies. In 1959, Francis met a welder named Tony Cardoza, and the two decided to start making films together, because if you're going to go into filmmaking, you obviously want to do it with a welder, I guess. The first film the pair made together was Yucca Flats. Now, if you've ever seen an Italian Western like The Good and the Bad and the Ugly, you'll know that these films are made without sound and the actors are brought in later to record their dialogue. And they give special attention to trying to match up the dialogue with the lip movements on the film. Now, Francis shot his movie without sound and did the same thing, but he didn't want to worry about the hassle of trying to match the voice with the lip movements so he was clever enough to do stuff like this. Hank? I can't find him. What do you think we should do? I don't know, Lois. Stay here, I'll go out farther. We'll find him. Yeah, he used limited dialogue, but when he had dialogue, he would have the characters' faces off screen or at least have their mouths blocked by their hand or something. And there's some bizarre narration in this film, stuff like this. Flag on the moon. How did it get there? Boys from the city, not yet caught in the whirlwind of progress. Feed soda pop to the thirsty pigs. One might ask, am I missing something? Is Coleman Francis operating on a higher plane of existence than the rest of us? By the way, this film is public domain, so I'm allowed to show a few clips. It is possible that Coleman was just having fun with friends and family. I mean, some of the actors are his wife and his kids and Tony Cardoza, and he plays a role. Who knows what he was thinking, but he did splurge for one big-name actor, a huge name in the world of B-movies, and that was Ed Wood star Tor Johnson. Yucca Flats. The A-bomb. In fact, this was Tor's last credited role, and of course, he plays the Beast. Uh. Uh. Now, Yucca Flats is a real place. In fact, it's been called the most irradiated nuclear blast spot on the face of the Earth. The perfect setting for a film in which a large man is turned into a monster. Now, of course, the film wasn't actually shot there for obvious reasons. Now, when the film was almost done, Francis added a pre credit sequence in which a topless girl gets strangled by a large man. It seems to have nothing to do with the rest of the film, and apparently, Francis just added this because, well, he liked nude scenes. Who doesn't? And it's a good thing that he added this scene because, even with this pre credit murder, the film clocks in at a short 54 minutes. Now the works of Coleman Francis, his trilogy of films, The Skydivers, Red Zone Cuba, and of course, The Beast of Yucca Flats, were basically forgotten about until they were discovered by Frank Conniff for Mystery Science Theater 3000. MST3K began showing these films in season six and they are hilarious. 
So we have Frank Conniff, TV's Frank, to thank for introducing the world to the films of Coleman Francis. And if you want to see his films, they're available for free all over the internet because they're public domain. You can find them at archive.org or YouTube. And even on YouTube is the MST3K versions, which are very funny. Well, I'm running out of time here. I gotta go. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with another film.